it going, GP fam? It's your boy here, Bizarro, bringing you that sweet content you've been asking for. So I hope you enjoyed the debut episode from all of us at Galactic Perspective. It was awesome setting down and ranking the top 10 greatest handhelds of all time, and we have so much more in store in the future with that series. In the coming weeks, you will see more of us at Galactic Perspective. About a year ago, I started a series called Unscripted, and it was designed to let you, the viewers, get to know me without all the character and all the scripting. And what better way to get to know everyone at Galactic Perspective than for each of us to do an unscripted video. So for those of you that haven't watched the original unscripted video, you can go check that out or you can check out this video which will have a more updated version of that older video. Before I jump into things, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Click that bell to be notified for all the sweet galactic content coming in the future. We're doing two videos a week. That's Tuesdays and Fridays at 4 p.m. So crack open those yoo-hoos, kick back, and let's get unscripted. So I grew up a pretty poor kid which means I didn't have, you know, the most current consoles growing up. I was born in 1991 and I probably was about three to four years old when I got my first regular Nintendo. Yes, this is 1994 to 1995. That means I'm very behind, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. And this was the system that really got me into gaming. Uh, I enjoyed the classics. Super Mario 1, 2, and 3, Duck Hunt, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, me being a wrestling fan, I enjoyed some of the older wrestling games and going back to play those now, not so much. But I enjoyed them as a kid. Come Christmas, I think it was 1996, I got a Super Nintendo Junior. Very first brand new console in the box, opening it Christmas morning. And I still remember the joy that I got out of opening that gift being so many years ago. But um, it come with Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island, which was my very first Super Nintendo game. And I absolutely loved it. So before this, I did get to play a little bit of the Super Nintendo before I got my own. I played Super Mario World. Um, I played a few other games before that. But the biggest game that I played was Mortal Kombat. So, being a 90s kid, you had to have played Mortal Kombat at some point, regardless of if it was bad or not for you back then, um, but everyone played it. And so I started with, believe it or not, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. You know, it, it was my favorite. I enjoyed it a lot. Playing it as a kid, you know, I didn't know what the crap I was doing, so I just button mashed a lot. But hands down, probably my favorite game for the Super Nintendo was the Yoshi's Island because that was the one I probably spent the most time with. So then came 1999, um, I think it was actually 2000, right after the new millennium, and I got a Sega Dreamcast. So, you know, having the Super Nintendo for so many years, um, I believe I still had my regular Nintendo at this point in time as well. So I was able to play both. But I went and got, you know, a Dreamcast. This was, you know, still fairly new. And it was really cool for the first time in my life to get something that new. Um, got a few games with it. Sonic Adventure, Ready to Rumble, Mortal Kombat Gold, and WWF Attitude. All four of these games have a special place for me. I love these games so much. Uh, to this day, when I play them, they have a special um, Bond special nostalgic feel but overall they're really great games anyway so being a kid you know I, I had the opportunities to you know play the Sega or Sega Genesis uh, I played the Atari 2600 um, I got to experience the PlayStation when it you know it was still probably fairly new um, it was around 1999 to 2000 when I experienced it um, so it'd been out a little bit, but the, you know, the games that I played for it, you know, the Twisted Metal series, I didn't get to experience the N64 very much. My experience with the N64 didn't happen until after I think I already gotten a PlayStation 2. I, 
I did eventually get to experience the N64. I had a jungle green version. Um, so I got the PS1 after the PS2 was already out. I got the PS2 Slim model um, way beyond the life. Uh, I think the, the two was, or the Slim version was kind of out for a little bit and I got it, but you know, I was still very thankful. That's one thing um, I've always been is thankful for what I do have. So, but, and then I, you know, like I said, the jungle green in 64, and this is where I fell in love with the game series was with that Majora's mask, the legend of Zelda's Majora's mask. It was the collector's edition version at that as well. So, um, I played that game so much. I love the transformation ability of that game. I love the dark tone. Um, and with Zelda fans, you either have, you know, Ocarina of Time as your favorite game, or you have Majora's Mask. And both are great games. I do lean more towards the Majora's Mask because of the transformation aspect, but I do understand the complaints at the same time that Majora's Mask has against it. Uh, you know, the, the clock, the um, kind of rushed feeling, you know, there's some, the glitches, honestly, the, the levels are hard in some ways, but it was such a great game, um, especially for its time. I still love going back and playing that game, but I would be remiss to not mention the PS2. So the PS2 was the system that really defined my high school years. Um, you know, it was hugely popular. Yeah, the Xbox and Xbox 360 came out around that time as well. During my high school years, the 360 was towards the end. Um, the 360 was very popular. I enjoyed it. Uh, I got in on Xbox when the 360 launched. Um, and But I enjoyed classics such as Halo and Halo 2. Um, me and my buddies would have LAN parties and have tournaments. And it was such an amazing experience. But the PlayStation 2 is a system that me and my brother would play a lot. And, you know, we would play, you know, Here Comes the Pain. Justice League Heroes, the Dragon Ball Z Budokai series. We would play Ultimate Spider-Man, which is one of my favorite games. So many games there was to play. And, you know, the co-op feature, which is something that games really don't have much of anymore, and it's sad, but I understand, you know, the future of online gaming and all that stuff. The GameCube, I did get to experience a little bit. Uh, I never had one until, you know, I started collecting, but you know, it was a system that I, I enjoyed. The handheld systems, you know, I, I actually got to play the Game Gear. Um, one of my nephews had it and I loved playing it. Um, the Sonic games on it were probably the ones that I played the most. I don't remember a whole lot of other games, but it was really cool because I don't, I really don't think I seen a Game Boy until later in my life uh, when I was in like middle school or something like that. So the Game Gear as a kid was really cool um, because of the backlit um, screen. Sadly, it did not perform as well. And that was mainly, you know, like um, Dangerous Dave said, was due to the, the support of the company. It just was a flaw. But to go on, um, so I had the PS3, Xbox One, PS4, and then the Switch before I kind of got out of gaming for a little bit, before I started collecting. Um, I felt as if I didn't have time for it, or honestly, I felt like the world was trying to tell me that I needed to grow up. But yeah, so took about a year away from gaming and you know, I felt, I felt an itch. Uh, Cause you know, I would get to the point, especially with current gaming, um, where I'd get bored with it. And because you know, not having a lot of time to put into games like a lot of people do, you know, with these newer games, it takes time to play them. And I didn't have that. So it was kind of frustrating. And so I would let it set for months at a time. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to step away for a little bit. But, you know, I, I've always enjoyed it. And that's why when I started back to collecting, I was really happy to be back in it. So why did I start collecting? So I started collecting in January of 2020. The month prior, my father passed away, my dad, my best friend, 
and you know it really created a void in my life and I wanted to go back to a place that was familiar that had that special feeling a time when things were easier and you know these old retro games kind of connect me to that and you know I started watching buying guides from Metal Jesus Rocks and then I watched you know the angry video game nerd and I watched some of his videos and you know it really made me have the itch to play these older games I had that itch probably about two years prior and I ended up with getting the retro pie system that I had but it just didn't really cut it so when I started collecting again I thought well maybe I should just stick with like you know the games that I played in high school and um, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna get a backwards compatible PS3 and that's why I got that and then the Dreamcast That was a system that always meant a lot to me Well, then, you know, I had only intended of getting a couple systems per year and building slow and You know, I didn't know anything about reselling and you know turning games to be able to build more collection and that's when I got introduced to retro rich channel and watched his channel and studied up and watched other channels and I was like man I can not only build a you know collection but I can you know build it without spending my own money and so it turned into the 360 then the the Wii the like so on and so forth I, I can't even remember the order that I got everything now but I you know I've got multiple systems and you know multiple hundreds of games so you know I originally had an idea for a couple channels in the past I had um, one with a buddy of mine and we called it an epic perspective where we reviewed movies games shows books comic books um, it was kind of like what this channel will be except on a this channel is a bigger platform um, we have more people but it was kind of that idea but it just didn't work out. And you know, we did a few videos and we just didn't have the time or the location. So it just was kind of a difficult task. Before that, I also did one other with a friend of mine with about wrestling. Uh, it was called the Beat Down Wrestling Podcast. And we did one video and it was pretty popular, but that was all it turned out to be. Um, he ended up moving away and you know so on so forth so when i was coming up with the idea of the retro gaming channel i needed a name of course so bizarro has always stuck with me um, as a gamer tag my brother went by superman 268 i went by bizarro 862 the reverse and you know i was like why don't i keep that um, but i put the one in there so I don't get trademarked or copywritten or anything like that. Um, but I, I wanted something with that. So Bizarro Entertainment was the original name. Then I went to Bizarro Gaming and that's where the original Super Nintendo looking logo um, come from. But then I changed it once a buddy of mine drew kind of the, uh, the raccoon. He asked me my favorite animal and raccoons are one of my favorite animals. And he drew the, the you know famous raccoon so you know and then i'm off to the races bizarro gaming has started and you know i'm going i make a few videos and then i get kind of uh disheartened you know i made some videos i started out really strong and then all my views started going down and you know yeah i was learning uh, as far as how to make videos it was time consuming um spending a lot of time doing it and I was like man and no one's watching my videos it was, it was frustrating I was like you know what I'm just gonna step away from it for a while and you know if you start YouTube with the expectation of instantly becoming famous or even becoming famous you know yeah there's youtubers that become famous um, and everyone wants to you know get more views get more subs but you should do youtube starting out especially to have fun with it to enjoy it and i wasn't i didn't start it with the right intentions so i took the break um then i come back 
and I was filming and then I had my daughter and I stepped away again. But then at the start of this year, I was like, you know what? It's time to make the comeback and go full at it. So, and that's where season one of Bizarro Gaming really started. Game Room Tour started pumping out videos weekly and I did it for, I think, three months. And it just, it, again, like it, it was so hard to do by myself. And I was like, you know, it, it would be really cool to have a group channel um, because most of your big YouTube channels are groups of people. You know, I'm filming, editing, you know, pushing it on Facebook and social media platforms. It'd be really cool to have others that can do that with me. And, you know, I can take a break a week and the channel still go. So I started conversing with a couple of the guys that I work with. Um, and then one that I'd worked with prior. And two of which had YouTube channels themselves, uh, one streams, and uh, I was like, hey, what would you think about doing a group YouTube channel? And we talked about it, and we're like, yeah, this would be kind of cool. You know, we could do, you know, one does, you know, action figures and collectibles, one does retro gaming, one does streaming, one does, you know, movies, comic books, like all this stuff. We start coming up with all these ideas, and you know, bringing in all these people, and then Galactic Perspective is born. So, originally, we started out, I think, with five people total. C continue to grow it. We are up to, I think, nine now. So, the people that you've seen in the video, we've added two more since, and we have one that's going to be editing our videos. It's behind the scenes. The goal is to have a group of people that just love all things entertainment, and love to make content for you, the viewers. So, and that brings me to, you know, what am I going to do for this channel? You know, you know me, the Bizarro of Bizarro Gaming, and now I am the Bizarro of Galactic Perspective, but what am I going to bring to this channel? I'm going to continue retro gaming on this channel. I'm going to, you know, review, I'm going to do you know, the Rankum videos. I'm gonna do the Retrospect. I'm still continuing that series. You know, game hunting videos and everything in between with retro gaming. That's gonna be my main avenue. Does that mean that I won't do anything else? No. Everyone on this channel will be, you know, they have a main topic, but they do, you know, just like the Rankum video, we included everyone and that's kind of the goal so yeah, that's a little bit about me, the man behind the character Bizarro, and you know, what my perspective on this channel will be. Like I said earlier, each member of the GP crew will be doing a similar video like this, and this will all lead to another big group video, and then we'll be off to the races after that. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to stay up to date with all the new galactic content coming. This has been the Bizarro of Galactic Perspective. Until next time.